While the Teamsters were taken to court today, authorities also moved in on organized crime in another way. CBS News law correspondent Rita Braver reports. The FBI and New Jersey State Police today arrested 22 alleged members and associates of the Genovese mob family, considered one of the country's most powerful mafia groups. The government says the case shows a unified and dangerous crime organization. It also illustrates the connection between organized crime's violent activities, including murder, and some of its more seemingly innocuous activities, such as sports and horse gambling. In particular, the Justice Department charges that some members of the Genovese family gunned down Irwin Schiff last summer in a New York restaurant, barely missing other diners. The mysterious 350-pound Schiff was said to be a con man linked to the rival Gambino family. And the indictment also charges some of the Genovese family members with conspiracy to kill the reputed head of the Gambinos, John Gotti. The murder never occurred. Those arrested today were herded into a local armory under tight security and in an unusual move arraigned there. The Justice Department says today's charges continue the government's strategy of going after the mafia family by family. Similar cases have been brought all through the Northeast, as well as in other cities across the nation. Those arrested today are allegedly part of the New Jersey branch of the Genovese Crime Syndicate. What we're saying is we've taken that group down and what occurs hereafter will determine whether or not it's been crippled or not. In fact, the Justice Department is applying that logic not only to this case, but also to the alleged mafia infiltration of the Teamsters. Justice Department officials say the only way to control the mob is to keep pounding away at it day after day. Rita Braver, CBS News, Washington. Good evening. Did you ever think the Gotti brothers would thank the FBI? They probably did because the feds tipped them off that they were the targets of a mob hit. Pablo Guzman reports on a so-called mobster roundup. The unsealed indictments were aimed at 22 people, said to be part of the New Jersey wing of the Genovese crime family. In an unusual security measure, the defendants were arraigned at the National Guard Armory in West Orange, except for 72-year-old Jimmy Napoli, whom the feds tracked down this morning at Doctors Hospital in Manhattan. Besides labor racketeering, loan sharking, and gambling charges, Newark U.S. Attorney Sam Alito Jr. and other Jersey law officials accused seven of the defendants, including Genovese consiglieri Bobby Manor, 59, of conspiring to kill Gene Gotti and his brother John, alleged Gambino godfather. How were you able to come across the conspiracy to kill John Gotti? The evidence uh, that supports these charges comes principally from court-ordered electronic surveillance at two locations in Hudson County, and we intercepted telephone conversations that revealed these conspiracies. The feds also charged three of the seven, Manna the Consiglieri, Marty Mats Casella, 71, and Richard Bacci de Sissio, 42, with successfully conspiring to kill Erwin Schiff, gunned down last August after finishing dinner at the Bravo Sergio restaurant on the east side. Authorities feel they know how and why Schiff was hit, but the shooter may still be at large, though Bacci de Sissio was identified as an enforcer type. One New York City law enforcement official told me he hoped that today's news was wrong. No such luck because now John Gotti knows for sure the names of some of his enemies. And as this official said, payback demands that bodies drop in retaliation in New York City. From outside the armory in West Orange, New Jersey, I'm Pablo Guzman, Fox News, Channel 5. The FBI has reportedly fingered the trigger man in the murder of Erwin Schiff and named a former Hoboken cop in the failed plot to kill reputed crime boss John Gotti. That's according to today's Daily News. The paper says it got the information from FBI affidavits of bug conversations. The documents reportedly named former Hoboken cop Frank Dipsy Daniello as the man who was supposed to kill John Gotti. The plan was said to have been scrapped after the FBI tipped off Gotti. That reportedly worried Daniello, who was quoted as saying, Did you tell him what I said the last time? Gotti knows someone's talking about it. The news says the FBI papers also identify 46-year-old Tony Rotolo as the trigger man in last August's rub-out of mob swindler Irwin the Fat Man Schiff. Schiff was murdered in a crowded Upper East Side restaurant. Two days after, Rotolo was complimented by Daniello. He reportedly said, It takes guts to do it like that. The kid is a to which Martin Casella, also charged in the Schiff murder, added, Stone Killer. Both hits, according to the paper, were planned by alleged Genovese family member Louis Anthony Manna. The FBI says its information is sealed, its investigation is continuing, and it's not making any comments. Jim. 
trial of some accused mobsters in federal court in Newark is giving quite a picture of how one mob in New York is being run. And today, there were new revelations about a famous mob rub out. Public Guzman reports. After 20 months of being kept under wraps by the feds, the so-called mystery blonde who was Erwin Schiff's dinner partner the night the fat man was blown away at the Bravo Sergio restaurant on the east side finally surfaced, Judy Gallup, a model. She took the witness stand at the racketeering and murder trial of six alleged members of the Jersey faction of the Genovese crime family. Gallup claimed that other than believing the shooter to be 5'7", she couldn't see his face, which was covered. The government claims that the hit was ordered by Bobby Manna, alleged Genovese family consiglieri, or number three man, at the request of reputed godfather Vinnie the Chin Giganti. Schiff's murder, the government says, was planned by alleged hitman Richard Bocci de Sissio, who they say may have been a backup to the actual shooter. DeCicio's attorney blasted Schiff at the opening of the trial. Erwin Schiff was a world-class cheat. No one deserves to be killed for being a world-class cheat. But you shouldn't be surprised if it happens. Schiff's murder caused investigators to probe Schiff's dealings. Authorities began to piece together a person who apparently chose a lifestyle as go-between from the mob to semi-legitimate but mob-controlled businesses and businessmen. With Tippi Horowitz, who was indicted for bank fraud, Schiff was a charter member of a bank apparently created to launder mob money taken chiefly from the mob's control of concrete and construction. With partner Dominic Rabufo, Schiff gained control of a so-called minority business, Luis Electrical, and used it as a front. Much of the testimony on Schiff's dealings came from Luis Electrical's former controller, Anthony Capello. With Mafia sponsorship, for example, Luis Electrical began to get multi-million dollar contracts for projects like wiring the Javits Convention Center, which authorities say was built with mob concrete. Luis Rosali, who founded Luis Electrical and may appear at the trial, spoke of Schiff shortly after the murder. We had him here as a, basically like he came across, like a financial advisor. He was, he was a friend. You know, he came across, he was going to help us, he was going to do a lot of other things, you know. Do you, but do you normally do business with a guy like that who comes over and says, hey, I'm your friend? No, no, he developed a friendship with my partner first. I mean, they basically were very close. I mean, you don't, uh, I mean, if this guy hadn't died, this, I wouldn't have no problems here. But Schiff's role as a bag man displeased Vinnie the Chin Giganti, authorities say. Part of the reason may have to do with Giganti's alleged feud with reputed rival godfather, John Gotti. As for the mystery woman, she will continue to give testimony on the stand. With the testimony about the murder of Erwin Schiff, the trial has moved to a meteor phase, one expected to climax with revelations about the alleged plot to kill John Gotti. From the Newark Federal Courthouse, I'm Pablo Guzman, Fox News, Channel 5. And there was a problem at the trial of some accused mobsters in Newark. Pablo Guzman reports they're accused of plotting to kill the godfather, John Gotti. Louis Bobby Manna and five other defendants were arrested last June 28th by federal authorities in New Jersey and charged with a variety of murder and attempted murder plots as part of their allegedly running Genovese crime family operations in Jersey. Opening arguments in their trial on those charges were to begin in Newark Federal Court this morning before Judge Mary Ann Trump Barry. But the start of the trial was delayed. Two jurors asked to be excused, citing personal reasons. As a result, one new juror was selected, and a second replacement is expected tomorrow. Before the new jury selection began, a defense attorney asked if jurors could be questioned on whether they'd seen today's daily news, which showed a picture of his client, Bobby Manna, in handcuffs. Judge Barry, Donald Trump's older sister, said there was a picture of her on the same page, and it's not too bad, so the jurors may just have looked at me and not your client, she said, much to the court's delight. Now, the key to the government's case are audio and video surveillance tapes, which, among other things, allegedly show the Jersey Genovese's plotting to kill John Gotti. Now, when the feds found out about this, what did they do? They told Gotti. We really don't know what happened next, except several weeks ago, the feds went to Vinnie the Chin Giganti, alleged head of the Genovese's, and told him, watch out for Gotti. In some circles, this is called playing both ends against the middle. In any case, charged with the alleged plot against Gotti and his brother Gene are Louis Bobby Manna, 60, alleged to be the consiglieri or counselor to reputed Genovese godfather Vinnie the Chin, his number three man, Bobby Manna's right hand, 71-year-old Marty Motz Casella, and Richard Bocci de Sissio, 47, alleged to be a hitman. Also said by police to be a torpedo is 67-year-old Frank Dipsy Daniello, a former police lieutenant indicted on other charges, together with John DeRico, 27, and Rocco Napoli, 42, who's grown a mustache for the trial since this picture was taken. But all the defendants fade behind the image of who may be the actual players on this stage. Vinnie the Chin Giganti, alleged by law enforcement to be godfather of the Genovese's, 
second in power of the five mafia families only to the Gambinos, whose alleged godfather is one John Gotti. The trial is expected to last about 12 weeks, but it's the Gambino-Genovese rivalry outside the courtroom which may generate all the headlines. From outside the Newark Federal Courthouse, I'm Pablo Guzman, Fox News, Channel 5. And more later on that from the amazing federal prosecutors are predicting the mob in New Jersey will be in a bad way thanks to a federal jury's verdict. One reputed boss, Bobby Manna, is facing up to 75 years in jail. And the prosecutors say the mob just doesn't have any experienced people. New bosses may make some big mistakes. Pablo Guzman reports. It was probably the most important mob trial in North Jersey. And when the verdict came in, it went the government's way. Bobby Manna and his close associates were convicted of the conspiracy to kill John Gotti and Gene Gotti, of killing Irwin Schiff, who was gunned down in a restaurant in Manhattan in 1987, of racketeering and racketeering conspiracy. So they all faced the possibility of multiple sentences of life imprisonment. Defense attorneys criticized the government's grab bag catch all approach. And, uh, the danger is that the jury will will not be able to sort out six different uh, cases of uh, against six different people, and and you get the spillover and you get prejudice. I think that's what happened with respect to uh, my clients. Only Johnny Derrico, considered to be a bit player in the case, beat most of the rap except for a gambling charge. But the other five defendants were found guilty of the most serious charges, like union business manager Rocco Napoli and former Hoboken police lieutenant Frank Dipsy Daniello, both guilty of racketeering, and found guilty of the most sensational charges in the trial, presided over by Judge Marianne Trump Barry, were Bobby Manna, accused of being the Genovese crime family's number three man, Marty Motz Casella, and accused hitman Richard Bocci de Sissio. Among other crimes, these three were found guilty of plotting to kill John Gotti and carrying out the murder of mob frontman Irwin Schiff in a Manhattan East Side restaurant. He was a threat to the family because he was beginning to talk about maybe going to the FBI. Uh, it may well be that he took money from the family as part of this big money laundering operation they were running. Part of the case on Schiff's murder was built through the testimony of his mystery blonde dinner date, Judy Gallup, and eyewitness Vivian Lewis. Wiretaps made up most of the case involving the plot to kill John and Gene Gotti. The government said it was all part of the Genovese crime family's war with the Gambino crime family. Vinny the Chin Giganti, reputed head of the Genovese's, allegedly ordered the hit on Gotti, accused of heading the Gambinos. In a government surveillance photo introduced as evidence, defendant Bobby Manna on the right is seen with Vinny the Chin, second from the left, outside Giganti's Little Italy Social Club. But all the motives came back to that place on Sullivan Street where the heads of the Genovese family make their decisions. Sullivan Street being the social club that Vinny the Chin Giganti allegedly frequents the most. Exactly, and also the place where Bobby Manna was spending day in and day out for years uh, of his life, uh, assisting Chin in running the family. With this verdict, the government is claiming a major victory in its war against organized crime. But this trial confirms the existence of another kind of war, that between the two largest crime families, the Gambinos and the Genovese's, for control of the action. But where the government uses wiretaps, the mafia uses bullets. From the Newark Federal Courthouse, I'm Pablo Guzman, Fox News, Channel 5.